This first tab actually makes me want to travel. It's called Tripsy, and it's not just well designed, it's super useful. And the way it works is that you forward all your reservations like flights, hotels, restaurants, etc. to the Tripsy email, and it automatically builds up the basic structure of your trip, and from there, you can start planning out individual days. But where this app really shines is the collaboration. Me and my wife plan everything together using this, and when we're on the trip, we use the Tripsy widget on our phones to easily see what's next. And you can add anything to it, from concerts, restaurants, museums, even random things like gyms or amusement parks. And if you don't know where to go yet, just tap on a category and it'll give you a bunch of ideas near your other activities. And it also shows you the ETA to get to those places, so you don't have to go back and forth with Google Maps. And as you scroll down the itinerary, the map updates in real time to show you where everything is. And there's even a map view that shows all the places you've added to your trip and how far they are from the hotel, so you don't accidentally sign up for a half marathon. A lot of these features used to be behind a paywall, but they're now available to everyone. The free version has everything I need, but if you do decide to pay, you get some extra features like expense tracking, flight updates, and calendar sync. And speaking of calendars, after paying for Fantastic Cal for years, I think Apple Calendar's gotten so good, it just doesn't make sense to pay for any calendar app anymore. You can now add new events straight from the spotlight or quickly find others without even opening the app. On the iPhone, you can now pinch to zoom across the entire year, and the monthly view finally shows your actual events instead of dots. And natural language input, like lunch with Steve tomorrow at 1, actually works now. We also finally have proper widgets, but what really sold it for me is that we can now see reminders inside the calendar and even on the widget. More on that in a second. And sure, it's not built for scheduling client meetings or juggling five time zones. But for the average person like me, this is more than enough. The one feature I do miss from Fantastical is calendar sets, which is the ability to group calendars into modes that you can switch between, like work or personal. But that's not worth 70 bucks a year. Honestly, I don't think even the best calendar app is worth that kind of money when Apple Calendar is free and gets you at least 90% of the way there. And going back to reminders, that's the other big change here, because after 10 or so years of using Todoist, I think reminders has finally caught up. Because with iPadOS 26, we can now add new reminders straight from the control center. And this is great, but what's even better is that because you can link any control center action to the iPhone's action button, we can now trigger new reminders on the phone instantly. And this for me is huge. And because we can now see reminders in the calendar app, and more importantly in the widget, I no longer need to keep a separate widget for tasks and another for the calendar. Another problem I always had with reminders is that you could not set specific repeat dates like the fourth day of every month or every Thursday, but that's now been fixed as well. Natural language processing also got way better. It used to be so bad that there were separate apps like Remind Me Faster just to solve this issue. Location-based reminders are also much more reliable now, and this is something that is paywalled in Todoist. Another thing that was just introduced and is actually useful is that now I can highlight text anywhere, send it to reminders, and it's going to use Apple intelligence to guess what the reminder should be. And what's really cool is that if you do this in the mail app, the reminder even links back to the original email. Yeah, this app is actually pretty good now, and I'm working on a full video about it, so make sure you're subscribed. Okay, so everything I copy on my Mac, like text, files, even images, and videos, gets saved across all my Apple devices, ready to be pasted whenever I need it. And that's all thanks to an app called Paste, and it's the only clipboard manager I've found that works flawlessly across all my devices. But what what makes it really powerful is that you can save anything you use more than once into pin boards to access them even faster. I use this for my socials, canned emails, and a bunch of other things. You can also name individual clippings so they're even easier to search later. And the best part is that you don't even need to open the app. You can just trigger it with a globe key on your keyboard and paste everything from there. And because everything is stored locally on your devices, you decide how long you want to keep your history for. But the thing is, even though Paste is by far the best clipboard manager app, I really only recommend it if you want the best of the best, or if you already pay for Setapp, which is a subscription service that gives you access to hundreds of paid apps like CleanShot X and even Tripsy from the beginning of the video. I'll leave a link in the description that gets you 30 days of free trial for Setapp instead of 7. But otherwise, I strongly recommend PastePal as an alternative, which is a reasonable one-time purchase as opposed to $30 a year, which is kind of ridiculous for a clipboard manager. Another thing that adds a ton of value to my iPad is the dynamic folio from Moft, who I'm partnering with for today's video. But this isn't just another iPad case. It's an origami style magnetic folio that somehow magically folds into over 20 different positions, all while staying super thin and light. There's a floating mode that I use all the time for Lightroom, and this actually makes the iPad look like it's levitating. And if you push it up, you enter theater mode, which is great to consume content or to use the iPad as a second screen. You can also set it fully upright to read or browse, or even flip into dual screen mode, which lets you place your iPhone on top, which is great for following tutorials or to face Time. And in this orientation, you can also place 
place it on your knee, which is surprisingly stable and is great for handwritten notes. And I'm not even scratching the surface. There's a ton of other positions to choose from, and there's even a magnetic Apple Pencil holder that you can snap on to keep your pencil extra secure. Moth is one of those few companies that are actually innovating in the space. I use their products on all my devices, and this dynamic folio might just be their best one yet. Very easy recommendation. Check it out using my link in the description, and my thanks to Moth for sponsoring this video. Okay, so now I have two apps that I use to keep track of stuff. The first is Parcel, which keeps track of all my deliveries and has a really clean interface. And my favorite feature is that you can connect your Amazon account to it and it pulls in your orders automatically. The free version lets you track three packages at once, which is usually enough for me, but the premium version is only $5 a year. And honestly, I like it so much and it's priced so reasonably, which is rare these days, that I pay just to support the developer. Okay, so this next one's called SQL and it's what I use to keep track of shows and movies. I've tried a bunch of apps in this category, but nothing comes close to this. It has a really clean design, you can track what you're watching, even down to individual episodes, build a proper backlog, and get notified the second something new drops. It even works for games, and it shows you how long each game will take to finish, which is helpful if you're not looking to accidentally commit to a 200 hour RPG. There's a paid version for 20 bucks a year, but the free version has all that I need. You can also use it for books and audiobooks, but I actually prefer a separate app for that, which is called Storygraph. And it's kind of like Goodreads if Goodreads hadn't given up a decade ago. You get much better recommendations based on your ratings and reading patterns. And it also gives you a lot more insights about each book, like the mood, pacing, and a bunch of other metadata that makes finding my next read super easy. Way better than good reads in my opinion. And I like to read on my Kindle at night when I go to bed, but if I have some downtime, I'll open up the Kindle app on my iPad and pick up where I left off. And because it syncs instantly, when I go to bed, the Kindle knows exactly where I stopped. That way, I don't have to carry the Kindle around, and it's always in the nightstand where it belongs. Also, when I'm reading on the iPad, I can still make the screen super warm. And I went over this and a bunch of other tweaks in my iPad settings video, and I'll leave a link to it right here as well as in the description below. And if I highlight something, whether it's on my Kindle, the Kindle app, or even some random article I saved online, it all gets synced through an app called Readwise. And this app connects your highlights from everywhere like Kindle, Twitter, and even random stuff you find on the web and pushes those highlights into your notes app of choice like Apple Notes, Notion, or Obsidian. But what makes Readwise so good is that it doesn't just store your highlights, it helps you remember them. It sends you an email of a handful of old highlights at whichever frequency you want for you to review them. So instead of collecting dust in your notes app, they're brought back to life and they're never forgotten. That alone is worth paying for, but the real power of Readwise is that you also get Readwise Reader and this is where things really level up. Reader is where I consume almost everything articles, newsletters, those long Twitter threads, and even YouTube videos. I do this not only because the UI is so much better in Reader, but if there's something that I want to save, I can just highlight it and it'll automatically sync to Readwise and then to my Notes app. This is especially useful for YouTube videos because Reader pulls the full transcript and plays it in sync with the video. So I can just highlight something and it's going to save the quote and give me a direct link to that exact moment in the video. You also get a private email that you can use to sign up for newsletters. And that way, they arrive straight to Reader, which not only protects your privacy, but also keeps your email inbox clean. I do this for every newsletter I sign up for. And if I pull up my subscribers to my own newsletter, I see that there are hundreds of you doing the same. I also hate reading those long Twitter threads on my phone, so I just send them to my Reader inbox where they are clean, easy to read, and highlightable. I've been using and talking about Reader ever since it launched, and not a day goes by that I don't open it. If you want to try it, there's a link in the description that gets you 60 days of free trial instead of 30. I do have a couple more apps, but first, I want to rapid fire through a few that I use a lot but aren't really worth spending time on. And the next one is RVNC Viewer. And what this does is that it lets me access my Mac remotely. There are fancier apps out there like Screens 5 and I'm sure they're better but this is really only for when I'm in another room and want to do something quick on the Mac. And for that this does the job and it's free. I also use Lightroom and I hate Adobe with a passion but this app is amazing on the iPad. Really nothing else comes close. Then I got two language learning apps. The first is everyone's favorite Duolingo which I think is much more enjoyable on the iPad. And I have quite a streak going right now, but honestly, if you're serious about learning a new language, you'll eventually need an actual teacher. And my choice for that is italki, which is a platform where you can find native speakers for one-on-one -on -one video lessons. I've had a lot of luck using it, so I highly recommend it. Another app I've been using every day, and I still can't believe it's free, is Particle. And at first glance, it seems like just another news aggregator. But what makes it special is that it pulls in hundreds of sources and organizes them into stories so that you can see multiple angles on each topic. And my favorite feature is the political spectrum tool that lets you instantly check how the left, 
the center and the right-leaning outlets are covering the same story. It's always interesting to see how each side amplifies more or less a certain piece of news based on whether or not it's convenient for them. You also get a personalized feed and a world news tab, and the app learns what to show more of based on what you upvote or downvote. I like this 10 times more than Apple News Plus, which costs $13 a month. Not only is this free, there's not even a paid version of it. 10 out of 10. Okay, so the Files app got a little overhaul. Most of it is pretty minor, like resizable columns and collapsible folders, but one update that I care about is that you can now finally add folders to the dock. I keep my iCloud desktop folder there, so if I drop a PDF or a video on my Mac, it's instantly waiting for me on the iPad. Oh, and I've had a new beta installed on all my devices, and I'll be covering those in a separate video, so make sure you subscribe. And speaking of watching videos, instead of using the built-in player, I use Infuse, which is better in every way. It's super customizable and can handle pretty much any format. And by the way, these video files take very little space, thanks to an app called called Clop that automatically compresses them the moment I drop them on my desktop. And I went over that as well as 13 other Mac apps that I use every day in this video right here. So make sure to check that out and I'll see you there.